The energy challenges of Japan and the world uh, and Asia go far beyond just China and just Japan. Uh, today I'd like to talk first about the energy challenges, four of them. First of all, geology, geography, growth, and geopolitics, and how in their interrelationship they create some rather counterintuitive responses uh, that uh, are going to have major uh, long-term implications for the broader world. First of all, as we know, in terms of the geology, the energy resources of the world are certainly finite. There are many ways they can be satisfied, but finite. Uh, in terms of uh, energy, Asia is particularly short. 2% of world oil uh, reserves and only 8% of world gas. The geography is also difficult. As you can see, uh, the reserves, most importantly, are in the Middle East. The growth, the uh, demand is in Northeast Asia, as we know, beginning with uh, China, Japan, and Korea. And so the imports have to come long distances. Japan, for example, 85% dependent on the Persian Gulf for its oil imports. Korea, 87. Um, India, 62. And uh, China uh, has been diversifying more toward Africa also, as we will hear. But still, 42% of all of China's oil coming from the Middle East. Growth has intensified this problem. We know very well about the uh, rapid growth of the East Asian nations and also their adaptability. Since the Lehman shocks, they've recovered rapidly, uh, more rapidly than other parts of the world, which has intensified the energy problems. Uh, oil demand, in general, has been growing faster in Asia despite uh, tremendous improvements in energy efficiency than it has in many parts of the world. And as a consequence, oil imports have also steadily risen, both through the sea lanes and also increasingly overland, with China being the most important. Finally, geopolitically, Asia in the world, of course, stands in an unusual position, increasingly dependent in the Middle East in a world where the United States position has traditionally been stronger. Also, the multinationals, the so-called Seven Sisters and others, have been crucial in the energy world. I'd like to look now at the responses that are possible for Asia. Of course, there are the sea lanes that I'll talk more about. But I do want to dwell on the concept of energy continentalism. The major producers in dark and in light, the large consumers, beginning with China, are right next to each other geographically, as you can see. Major political changes, the collapse of the Soviet Union, China's modernizations, the Indian reforms in particular, have those critical junctures have created a much more interdependent Asia, whose importance, I think, is just beginning to understood. This is a geopolitical as well as an economic phenomenon. And the, the growth process will deepen the interdependencies. 18 million barrels of oil roughly a day from Hormuz to Northeast Asia. That will probably rise to around 30 million. We've heard about shale gas. Certainly, that will be important, but the levels of demand are rising also. Conversely, from the Middle East itself, from uh, land rovers to land cruisers, as I put it. The, um, the dependence on Europe has been declining. Dependence on Asia in the Middle East for autos, for textiles, for electronics has been rising. This has major geopolitical implications all over the, this through the sea lanes. There are various uh, dynamics in the sea lanes, particularly deep in the Indian Ocean, I would stress, where the Blue Water Navy capabilities of the United States are particularly important, Diego Garcia and so on. What is the response for China? One increasing possibility is continentalism. Chinese energy demand is rising rapidly. President Xi, the last 10 days, as you know, has been in four Central Asian countries in Russia, his second trip to Russia within uh, this year. Pipelines are increasingly important. The ASPO for oil has been completed. As you can see from this map, the western reaches of China are considerably closer to the Straits of Hormuz than they are to Beijing. 
uh, energy demand is moving further to the west. In the alternative one, as Professor Lambton suggested, could well be nuclear. The other is deeper uh, uh, geopolitically related ties, be they natural gas, be they oil, uh, further to the west and a deepening uh, interdependence with the Middle East. So where is that continentalism likely to lead and how fast will it emerge? Thank you.